There's been a few times now where I've mentioned I'm just not really using the PS5's activity card system nearly as much as I thought I would have, and I'm going to venture a guess and say that might be the case for a lot of people, but why is that? So recently I tested a lot of games to get an idea of what's going on with their card system support when it comes to estimated time, game help, launching games. Um, I found some very interesting inconsistent results and that might explain why the card system is a bit problematic in my opinion. So let's be candid for a moment. What is the point of the card system? Why did Sony bother with crafting a brand new UI and making cards one of the hallmark features? Some might remember around PS5's launch that this was outlined on a few occasions, but perhaps more directly, we learned exactly what the end goal was from Sony's point of view via internal documents that Vice had obtained. These documents were given to developers in 2019 as a way to brief them on the card system and the game help feature. Based on internal tracking data and surveys conducted over years, they concluded that single player experiences are alive and well, but there's a barrier to playing them for a lot of people. Citing reasons like, I have no idea how long I might need, I won't play unless I have 2 plus hours, it takes a lot of time to scan through long help videos when I'm stuck, how to engage without spoilers, forgot what I was doing last time I played, it's hard to get back in, and thus the card system was made to outline important information like estimated time, game help to quickly figure something out, and easier ways to jump into missions. This was another big part of the card system Sony was touting publicly at the time, you can jump right into your last mission from a card. You can jump into a multiplayer lobby quickly, bypassing in-game menus. In theory, it all sounded like a really unique feature, but as we've seen in the past with plenty of more bespoke peripherals or software features, developer support is key, and that's why after a year and a half, cards have been largely a mixed bag. This is what I was getting at in the intro where I'm just not using cards at all, or at least not since launch, and the reason for that is because they're so inconsistent with what you would expect the cards are supposed to do when it comes to something like launching games. Let's start with a very simple premise. This generation these consoles have extremely fast SSDs, more so for PS5, this was also heavily advertised too, having a console with ultra quick boot times, no load screens, restarting fast after a death, and these are all largely true. It's been an amazing quality of life improvement, but load times are a bit tricky, splash screens are still a thing, and we can say they don't have to be. PlayStation Studio games are the best example here. The behavior I've been able to validate is that the first time you boot up a title that you've never played, or if you haven't played it for an undisclosed amount of time, you'll usually get an unskippable PS Studios animation. After that, cold booting that title again will skip it, or allow you to skip it, meaning you'll now get to the title menu in mere seconds, and your console will recognize this after using rest mode, removing the disc, a hard restart, removing the AC cable, etc. The only way to get the unskippable PS Studios animation again is to play it on a new account or not play the game for a while. It seems like that could be as long as a few weeks, because Horizon Forbidden West still didn't show the animation for me when I went to play it again after I platinumed it April 9th. The point is, we know for a fact splash screens for the developer and publisher don't have to be there, so if you're playing a game that does this without any way of skipping it, well, it doesn't have to be that way. But that's where the card system should be coming in to save the day, right? This is where it gets odd. I tested a variety of games and found multiple permutations for how booting from a card works. Unsurprisingly, launch titles Spider-Man Miles Morales or Sackboy Big Adventure did exactly what you think they should do. In Miles Morales, you can choose a card for a variety of missions that are available to you and boot right into it. The card will skip the title screen, act as fast travel, and place you right where you need to be in seconds. Sackboy Big Adventure, the game Sony used to reveal the card system, does the same. You'll have a card for the current world you're in, the last level you were on, and the costume emporium. You can use these in-game for rudimentary fast travel, or you can boot from them, and that will skip the title screen and place you right where you need to be. But this simply isn't the case for, well, most other games I tried. Third party is where it's really inconsistent. Ghost Runner makes no difference when booting from a card. It won't skip splash screens, and it takes you right to the menu. Pumpkin Jack has a single card for your last used save file, and that will not skip the splash screen, but it does take you right into the level. Deathloop has a card for the last level you were in, if you left the game on that, and it will take you right to that level, 
but it seemingly isn't that much faster, and that's something we should mention. We are no doubt splitting hairs here when it comes to the difference being a few seconds, but it is still an advertised feature no less. Hades has a card for starting a new run, but this doesn't do anything. It's just a regular boot to the menu. Grand Theft Auto V, a game that loads on the longer side as far as PS5 games go, has cards for both the story mode or online. The online modes take you to the menu, and they're not really faster at all. In fact, the story mode one doesn't work, or at least for me it doesn't. It hangs at 90% every time. Black Ops Cold War has a variety of cards for multiplayer modes. This should take you right to matchmaking, but it simply boots you to the main menu. It's only until you're playing the game that they'll take you directly to matchmaking. Still useful, but falls short of the expected behavior when booting. When it comes to other PS Studio games, this was also hit or miss. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart has a story mode card with your last used save, but it will take you to the menu. Oddly enough, I found if you use it again on the menu, you get to gameplay with the same menu. but if you use it on the save file screen, then you get gameplay with no menu. Destruction All-Stars has the PS Studios animation display every time, but you can skip it, and the matchmaking card will not skip this for you, but indeed it will auto-select matchmaking once you're in. So there's really no set rule on how a card should be utilized when you start the game from one, but the thing with cards is that they are going to vary on the nature of the game, and that was part of Sony's briefing to developers, giving them ideas and best practices for how they should be used. More recently, Horizon Forbidden West launched, a major AAA first party game, and the cards for this game are… kinda useless. If you decide to use one from a cold boot, they will skip the main menu, but they will only place you where you last were. Your map will automatically be marked with the quest you chose. Now, the thing is, this does make sense in the context of Horizon. You are not allowed to fast travel freely in the game. You must use fast travel packs or fast travel from campfire to campfire. And since the cards don't offer much else, there's just not much of a reason to use them here. A slightly better example is Uncharted The Legacy of Thieves Collection. This game boots very fast, but it will be quicker with a card, taking you directly to your last save. However, that's all they'll do. You'll get one card for Uncharted 4, and one for Lost Legacy. You can actually switch between them in-game, and that's very quick too, but that's it. Which is disappointing, because Uncharted is structured in a way where cards could be extremely useful. Remember how I said Ghost Runner's cards won't boot you into the game any faster? Well, that's true, but it does make excellent use of game help. This was a feature I was delighted by when the console launched. I loved how simple and easy to use it was, because when it's done correctly, it really does serve the exact purpose of, I can't find this item or I don't know what to do, and instead of searching on GameFAQs or YouTube, skipping intros, skimming through a video, maybe you see a thumbnail that spoils the game for you, we've all been there, it's a hassle. Having a one minute clip baked right into the UI while you're playing, showing you only what you need to know, is awesome. Ghost Runner has them and it also shows a percentage to show your progress. Ghost Runner doesn't have any time estimates though, and that's okay because this game is more skill based and for this particular situation, time estimates may not be that helpful. So it's not to say a game has to use every aspect of cards, but rather using them where it makes sense for the nature of that game. So if we go back to Ratchet and Clank, the boot functionality may have been odd, sure, but Ratchet otherwise does well with time estimates, progress, and game help. You actually get a time estimate breakdown for your short term objective and then another time estimate for your current level. Later on, you'll get cards for the collectibles too, which is really useful. The disappointing thing though is that time estimates, collectible tracking, game help, that's all far and few between. A lot of games simply have one or two cards for just going into story mode or multiplayer, and that's it. Which, even that would be just okay if they at least booted you right into gameplay as fast as possible, but that's not at all what most games do. Right now, the gold standard, without a doubt, is easily a Plague Tale Innocence. This game has a chapter-specific card, an overall completion card, and a chapter collectibles card. Further off to the right are previously uncompleted chapter collectible cards. Each one has game help tips, both with text and video, time estimates are given for the whole chapter, or smaller ones for the next checkpoint, and cards will skip the splash screen, taking you right to where you were last. This is the way to do it. 
Although to be fair, A Plague Tale is absolutely a linear, more structured game that fits perfectly with every feature of cards. We do see that open world games, roguelites, multiplayer games, it's not a one size fits all, but we see that some games do nothing and some do what they can. A Plague Tale Innocence was not only a good fit, but one where every opportunity was used. Now, the one thing I haven't mentioned just yet is the uh, trophy support for the card system. And the reason for that is, well, thankfully, it's not inconsistent. It's across all games. All games have trophies and they all show up uh, via cards, which more recently we had the trophy tracker feature added via firmware. And that one actually is quite helpful because you can pin any trophies you want to that trophy tracker. I've been using it and it does work quite well. Um, the only weird thing has always been uh, what trophy cards show up in that horizontal row you know out of a list of 30 40 50 trophies you're usually going to get things in there that aren't really that helpful or insightful to you in that moment of where you are in the game so you often have to go look at the full list which is kind of a pain but otherwise at the very least every single game has those show up because every game has trophies uh, the big problem is the inconsistency and that comes with the more consumer facing features of cards that sony was touting around launch and after launch and so when it comes to you know booting games very quickly and jumping around all your software and jumping to you know specific points in a game the expected behavior is just not there for most games it's often a cold boot so there's no reason to get in the habit of using them that way. And also the onus is always on the developer to use these things, right? That's why we mentioned for very bespoke peripherals or software features, if developers aren't using them, then it's just, you know, that's, we, we see this so often and it's happening here again, which what, what can Sony really do? I'm assuming, you know, behind the scenes, they do have some guidelines and perhaps some templates in the SDK for developers, but this might be something where Sony has to step in with um, some very small but necessary mandates of if you're going to support the card system, if you're going to, you know, support cards in a way where you can boot from them, here's what it has to do every time. It has to skip splash screens, it has to skip the main menu, and it has to take you directly to gameplay that the user chose. Um, and if a, if a developer can't, you know, accommodate for that in the context of their game where maybe it needs a, a secondary client login for online or something, you know, that's where it could be an exception. But overall, there has to be something where Sony steps in and says, if you're going to do it, this is what it has to look like. Um, you know, they, they have mandates for things like that across their system. I think that needs to be here for the card system um, at the very least, but that's the uh, the problem. The onus is on the developer, and that's why I'm, I'm shocked that some developers really go out of their way to do things like game help. It's really cool, but they have to do that, and that's not shocking, but just really surprising because the, the process of making games is not easy at all, and now you have this extra little thing that is you know not expected but certainly when it's there it's it's awesome right so the card system when it works it's just it it does work really well right launch titles are always the best representation of those very uh, proprietary features that the console maker put in but we can see how developer support is key and right now it's just it's not there and that's why it's really falling short Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't just yet, please consider subscribing for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan. And that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.